let's explore the world of electronics. So what I have here is nothing but a simple source of power. It's connected to my laptop and to this, let's make a simple circuit and I'm going to add a bulb here, a LED. So now I have a LED. Let's say this is a light in your room, but this light is always on. You don't want that. So you add a switch to your circuit such that now you can control the light with this switch. So when you switch it on, the light is on and when you switch it off, the light is off. Let's say you have a fan in your house, in your room and when you want to switch on the fan, you press a button and you can switch it on. Switch it off, switch it on. But it's not that warm and you don't want the fan to run that fast. So what do you do? You change this switch and you take another switch, which is also called a regulator. And using this switch, now you can control the speed of your fan. It is off then you can, if it's not that hot, it will run a bit like this, but you can keep increasing the flow of electrons. What you are controlling with these switches is the flow of electrons because electricity is nothing but the flow of electrons. And electronics is all about controlling this flow. So by controlling the flow of electrons, you can control the speed of the fan. But you know what? You are really, really lazy. You don't even want to get up to control the regulator. You want that when you are lying down in your bed, just like you can control your TV with a remote, you want to control this fan with a remote. So we can attach a sensor that can detect a signal from a remote control and then let the electrons flow through. So if there is no signal from this remote, there are no electrons flowing through. But when my sensor here receives a signal from the transmitter here, my fan starts working. But you know, you wish you had a bit more fun way of controlling this fan. You know, remotes are so boring. So you say, oh, let me introduce a new kind of a sensor. And this sensor is sound sensitive. So if you want, if you want to trigger the circuit, you just have to make some sound. If I speak loudly, it will trigger on. on. There are many ways of, of controlling a circuit or the flow of electrons. So for example, I can also use Wi-Fi technology. I have here a, a Wi-Fi transmitter and I have here a Wi-Fi receiver. And if I attach a LED to this I can control this LED remotely and this can be really, really far apart. If I take it too far, it will not be in the camera, but I can be in another room and I can control the LED from that other room. So this is the essence of electronics. You can think of electronics as one circuit controlling another circuit. And the electronics that we are talking about is all about these sensors. So we started with a switch, remember? So a switch is something that controls the flow of electrons, but you have to be near the switch. Then you wanted more control over the flow of electrons. So you put a switch, a variable resistance switch, which let you control the flow of electrons. Then you used a infrared sensor by which you could use a remote control to control the same circuit. It doesn't matter if the circuit has a, a LED or a fan or an alarm or a robot, whatever it may be, it's about controlling the flow of electrons. And then 
instead of the remote trigger we got this uh, wireless transmitter and wireless receiver which makes it possible to control the circuit even if you are very far away you also have equipment which if you add it to this circuit this is this is called a cloud bit so this sends a signal to the internet and you can control circuits via the internet this is called internet of things i can add this to this circuit and then using an app on the phone i can control this via the internet this is something we will look at later because it takes time to set it up so this is the revolution in electronics where instead of switches we have sensors which help us control all kinds of circuits that you can imagine for example if you wanted to build a smart street light system where you wanted that the street light should switch on whenever the sun goes down all you have to do is add a light sensor so this is a light sensor so let's say it's getting dark which means no light is falling on the sensor so my street lights come on but when the sun comes out that is there is light on, falling on the sensor my street light goes off or if you've seen those um, you know th those alarms that go off whenever a car is backing up all you need is a proximity sensor so you have a proximity sensor and you attach an alarm to it and then if this is the car if this is the car and it's there is some obstacle here and the car is backing up the alarm goes off so all you need is a proximity sensor to make a car reversing alarm or if you wanted that your fan would work based on the temperature so if the temperature went if the temperature goes above a certain degree celsius the your your fan starts working and otherwise it doesn't work so now what i have here is a temperature sensor and if the temperature will rise the fan will work so i'll try to raise the temperature so maybe you will see that the fan is going a little faster and i can't cool it instantly but once it gets cooled down it will stop the flow of electrons and this uh, fan will stop working so now using a temperature sensor you have a fan which has become a intelligent fan in the sense that you are not controlling it either with 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 a on off switch or with a variable resistance switch it is an autonomous machine autonomous machine means that it can take decisions on its own but as you can see when i have put the circuit like this that is i have just put a temperature sensor which has some default setting there's not much i can do to control the fan what i want is that i could tell this sensor that if the temperature goes above 23 degrees celsius then work at speed 2 if it goes above 24 degrees celsius then work at speed 5 and so forth so if you wanted to make this circuit such that you use the sensor to automate this but you also wanted more intelligence built into this circuit then you need to add a computer and in electronics to use these kind of circuits we use microcontrollers or microcomputers so for example this is a microbit and using the microbit we can if we add a microbit to this sensor and program we can write the program that i was saying that we can we can tell the temperature sensor what to do with the flow of electrons based on what the temperature is and you've got many types of uh, microcontrollers or even computers so i've got another microcontroller here this is an arduino you can connect this to your laptop or pc to program it and then there are all these input output pins that you can use to connect the sensors and this equipment so essentially this will some go something like this it will sit in between your sensor and your equipment and when you program this you will be able to tell the sensor what to do 
such that this fan, which is also called an actuator, how should it operate? And then you can go all the way to a Raspberry Pi. So a Raspberry Pi is really a small computer. In fact, if you wanted to make a computer for yourself and you didn't have too much money, then I seriously recommend that you look at a Raspberry Pi to make a computer of your own. It is very cheap in like 10,000 rupees, you will be able to make a computer. So this is the world of electronics. You've got all kinds of sensors here and you've got all kinds of computers, mini computers or microcontrollers to add intelligence to your circuits. Just to summarize what we have said about electronics, electronics is about one circuit controlling another circuit. And then when you add sensors and all these mini computers, you can create some very sophisticated circuits like robotics, like Internet of Things and so forth. So embedding intelligence in this whole flow of electrons is what electronics is all about. And we will explore more of it first with a micro bit and later with Arduino and Raspberry Pi.